Jesus picks me up and holds me so close that I can't see anything. And he holds me so close. And Jesus starts to weep. And he says, please forgive me. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to See Things Above TV. I'm your host, Lucha Cooney. So today we're going to take a look at this clip from a pastor out of Bethel Church who makes a completely heretical statement and acts like everything is all good and he's telling you this warm and fuzzy story. So we're gonna get into that in a second. Before we do, if y'all like content like this, y'all know what to do, like, share, and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications so you know when we drop new content on this channel. So without further ado, let's hop right into this clip. A, a pastor I, I really respected said some words and hurt me so bad. And one time I was laying on the floor, actually it was in this room. I'm laying on the floor and in, an, in a vision, in an encounter with God, in a vision, Jesus picks me up and holds me so close that I can't see anything. And he holds me so close and Jesus starts to weep. And he says, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I said, what are you talking about? Please forgive you. He said, when that pastor hurt you, it's as if I hurt you. So there are so many things wrong with what this guy just said. I don't even know where to start. But let's go ahead and just start with the fact that he is claiming that he had a vision in which he saw Jesus. Whenever we see people encounter a vision of Christ in the scriptures, it is not an, an, a situation where there's some sort of casual response to it. If you look at John and Revelation, you see how he is completely awestruck when he sees the Lord in this uh, vision of, of more of his glory being revealed. This is the same John who's referred to as the disciple whom the Lord loved, indicating that he had a very close relationship with the Lord when he was walking on earth in his earthly ministry. And so for John to react like that tells you that you cannot have an encounter with Jesus and act like it was just a casual thing. I mean, this guy would probably be in the psych ward if he actually had encountered Christ. He, he would not be okay after that, okay? And so that's the first part of it. So let's just get that part out the way. Now, for him to insinuate that somehow Jesus asked him for forgiveness is extremely problematic and is completely blasphemous. It's blasphemous and it is embarrassing and ridiculous for a pastor, a minister of the gospel, to stand up there and say that Jesus asked him for forgiveness. I mean, I don't even know where these guys come up with the unmitigated gall to come up with these stories and act like it is okay for them to just spew heresy. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. To say that Jesus asked him for forgiveness is saying that Jesus actually sinned. That is what he is saying. And even though he may not see it that way, that is what the logical conclusion of his statement leads us to. Jesus cannot be asking this man for forgiveness because Jesus is spotless, the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world, of those who would believe in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If the Lord Jesus Christ was not sinless, then he could not have atoned for our sin. We needed somebody who was sinless to actually be the bearer of our sin, first of all. And then we also needed somebody who, was, who had lived a perfectly righteous life so that that righteousness could be imputed to us. So it is on one hand atoning for our sin because he's, he's the perfect sacrifice. And then on the other hand, because of his perfect righteousness, he can then grant us that righteousness by imputing that to us and making us justified before God. In our union with Christ, we do not impart anything to Jesus, but we receive from Jesus. We receive what is necessary for our salvation, and we receive, as a result of that, a union with him that allows us now to actually grow in sanctification by the Holy Spirit. But this idea that because a, an individual sinned to another individual, and even though that person is a member of the church— 
supposedly that somehow that indicates that that means Jesus also now is asking for forgiveness because Jesus is now somehow culpable for that sin is utterly ridiculous. Somehow this is not surprising coming from Bethel because they make a lot of just bogus claims about things that have happened at the church. They believe in a really terrible brand of miraculous gifts being displayed. They exaggerate so many things to make it sound sensational, and they sell this idea of this place where miraculous things are experienced, and it's just a regular thing. It's a regular thing. Not only that, we know that they also engage in horrible practices like grave sucking, where people would actually lie at the graves of certain individuals who passed on and try to quote unquote, uh, absorb their mantle, which means to, to get their their uh, so-called anointing that they had on their lives, that those things would rub off onto the people who are lying on these uh, grave sites uh, so that they can now do ministry in the similar way that uh, these people, the dead people did, which is just, this. it's horrible stuff. It's horrible, dark, demonic stuff that they do. And that's just one of the things we do. And if you want to see an extended uh, video on that, I would definitely recommend that you check out uh, American Gospel TV and see their coverage on this very topic. Because if you've never heard of it, it's going to shock you. And that's just some of the terrible things that we know have happened at Bethel Church. We also know of the inc incident where the young, uh, just a young girl died and they had her parents and everybody believing that she was going to be raised to life. And they basically held her just in this, they just kept her for an extended period of time before giving this young child a funeral because they thought that she was going to be raised to life and they had made this proclamation that it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and it never did, of course. And so this is the kind of place that you're dealing with. This is the kind of place that you're dealing with, and this is why you cannot even be listening to the music that comes out of this place because it is just riddled and sprinkled with false theology that has you believe in nonsense like this because you are being indoctrinated into this garbage. So to wrap this up, man, this guy is just flat out lying about the situation. That didn't happen. He's teaching false doctrine. And we don't even need further context. People might say, oh, man, you know, like this is just a short clip. No, this is we've seen enough to tell us what we need to know about what this guy believes and what he's about and the kind of lies that he's willing to tell to perpetuate this false theology that is the Bethel brand. So don't buy into this stuff. This is horrible, heretical nonsense. And this guy should not be on anybody's pulpit anywhere. In fact, he needs to repent himself and ask Jesus, really ask Jesus for forgiveness instead of lying that Jesus asked him for forgiveness. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear from y'all. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, all right? God bless y'all, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.